and welcome back to Tiny Artist TV. For the month of February, I'm going to be celebrating a different black artist, not, not artist in particular, but a different black history figure each week. So I have four different genres that I'm going to be covering. The first week is going to be a writer, the second week is going to be a musician, the third week is going to be an inventor, and then in the last week I'm going to be doing someone who is currently still alive. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Before Maya Angelou, before Langston Hughes, and even before Phyllis Wheatley, who was the first African-American woman to be published in American literature, there was Jupiter Hammond. And even though I wasn't able to find a significant amount on his life, um, there's more information on his work than on him as a person, I'm going to share with you what I was able to find. So Jupiter was born in 1711 as a slave to the Lloyd family in Lloyd Harbor, New York. The Lloyd seemed to be a little bit ahead of the curve considering that even though um, Jupiter's father and mother were both slaves, um, Jupiter's father, Obadiah, actually learned to read and write and the Lloyds even encouraged Jupiter to learn to read and write and to attend school and he was actually allowed to attend school with the Lloyd's children. Like that's, that's not something that you hear about. Like this was way before separate but equal, desegregation, civil rights, before any of that was even thought about for the African American community and the slave community. Um, Unfortunately, even though Jupiter did have the opportunities to read and write and become a prolific member of the African American community and was respected by the Lloyd family, he was never actually emancipated. He continued to serve the Lloyd family for four generations um, and even worked with them as a clerk, a farmhand, an artisan with the Lloyd family business, which I couldn't find out what that was every time I tried to search it. It just took me back to the Lloyd Manor, visit the historical landmark, which is a very nice looking house. If you have a chance to go up there, check it out. Anyway, um, but he was never emancipated, but like I said, he was still a well-respected member of his community, and he even served as a preacher to his fellow slaves that were at the Lloyd estate. His first work was published in 1761, and the title is a bit of a mouthful, but it's a very beautifully written poem. It's called, An Evening Thought, Salvation by Christ with Penitential Cries, composed by Jupiter Hammond, a Negro belonging to Mr. Lloyd of Queens Village on Long Island. It was originally published as a broadside, which, um, is one of those like streetwide flyers that typically hosted, you know, um, political events or uh, limericks and poems in this effect. And I'm actually going to post a link down in the description so that you guys can read, like, if you're interested, read the whole thing. I was going to read some of it for this video, but it is, it's very long, but it is very well written. Anyway, um, <laughs> So that was his first published work. Like I said, that was published in 1761. In 1787, he delivered his second most well-known work, which is a speech titled An Address to the Negroes in the State of New York. In this address, he discusses, or more so ponders, the complex situation of being able to serve God with gladness in a distressing and even traumatizing situation and in the introduction or I guess in the preamble he commends his master for realizing that African Americans are not incompetent chattel in need of help but are actually whole people who are just as capable. Um, the tone of the speech is a bit controversial um, in the beginning as he addresses the overall state of his brethren that are not privy to the opportunities that he's been given. 
but he tries to shift to a more hopeful position as he ensures that God will enact justice um, against their oppressors. And for those who remain faithful to God, God will remain faithful to them. Um, again, stating that he was a preacher to his fellow African American community. So it does have a very even though it's it says it's a speech, but it definitely reads like a sermon and is again very well written. Um, but he does come in a little hot at the beginning. Um, if you read it for yourself, you'll see what I mean. Um, so current day, he is buried in an unmarked grave at the Lloyd Estate in New York. And if you visit the manor, um, which the Lloyd Manor actually did move so it's no longer in queen's village actually at lloyd harbor which is sort of north east yeah northeast of where queen's is so it's kind of on the opposite side of the island actually if again if you get a chance to visit and see his grave just i guess pay respects to this guy who kind of paved the way for it. and it's it was a joint effort. The fact that not only did he just take the reins of, you know, the reading and writing opportunity that he was given, but to use it so prolifically and spread hope to a people who had little to no hope, if any, at the time, um, because this was, this, he, he was born and died, like, right at the turn of the century. Um, he died in 1806, but, yeah, Jupiter Hammond, first African-American published writer, and I can only imagine how many others kind of flew under the radar before Hammond, before Phyllis Wheatley, but as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we got to have Langston Hughes, we got to have W.E.B. Du Bois, we got to have Maya Angelou, Octavia Butler, Martin Luther King, so many other great writers and speakers because this man was given an opportunity to pave the way. So this is Jupiter Hammond. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Happy Black History Month, and have a weird day. As a matter of fact, why don't you go ahead and spend your day reading something from a black author today?